so today we're going to be talking about a couple of applications. We're going to be talking about coves, wall grazing, and wall washing. Um, what it is you're probably trying to achieve when you think about doing these, what the challenges to that might be, what products we offer, and how they're designed to help you achieve those goals. And then we're going to be introducing to you a brand new product of ours. It's called the Prue Cove. And so first we're going to get into the Prue Cove. Prue Cove is uh, following the uh, trend of miniaturization and um, and specifically with coves as they tend to get smaller both in size and height but also the distance between the cove and the ceiling gets to be even smaller and uh, so when we started this project we asked ourselves um, you know what can we do to um, affect that or to help that uh, application and um, we came up with two things obviously one it needs to be much smaller because we're going to places where usually only tape could fit uh, and then the second thing was uh, because we're getting very close to these ceilings um, the tape was only giving you a glow out of that um, and maybe if you wanted to just articulate that cove that was fine but if you wanted to throw something uh, into the space or even light the space from the cove we needed something with, uh, with a much better throw and because uh, we are now very tight to the ceiling and, and by that I mean less than 12 inches uh, to throw light very far we're going to have to work on uh, creating something that's very close to a graze optic and um, so the, uh, the product itself, and this is the, uh, the remote driven version as you can see, um, uh, answers that question. The, the question was how small can we make an asymmetric optic? And, and honestly, as you compare what we have come up with, with what we knew before and is current in our, um, uh, in our microcove, you'll see that obviously scale is, uh, is a, a significantly smaller. So we are um, down to effectively one inch tall by one and a half inch wide. So to do what we wanted to do in terms of our optical development, it really took uh, a different approach from our, um, our previous uh, uh, microcove, which is using a, a reflector system and simply a prismatic refractor in the front. And in this case, to shrink this down to the scale that we wanted to, uh, we now are using three different optical components. So the first one, uh, is a TIR style optic which is placed right on top of the chip and it captures everything that comes immediately out of the chip. The front half uh, is, is moved towards the main beam or our main aiming angle. Uh, the second half of the chip is captured and then sent into the second part of the optic which is a specular reflector which grabs that uh, from the back half of the chip and then throws that also into the uh, uh, main aiming angle. And then the third uh, is a secondary uh, prismatic refractor again, and its job is to clean up any uh, color striations, and then also to throw light uh, above and behind uh, the optic itself, so that when you get into the cove, uh, it's this area that you have to worry about. And so the second part that we're talking about, the light that's happening above and, and then behind in the back of the cove, uh, become really important actually. And uh, so that's what that third optic does is to, uh, to push light into the back because if I have too much light in, going into the back, uh, that becomes the brightest thing in your field of vision and that's what draws your eye and all of a sudden you have now what looks more like a floating ceiling effect. Uh, if it's not enough, um, it, it appears dim or, or worse even uh, with shadows and as you look into that cove you'll notice that it was not filled well and so the challenge with throwing light very far um, almost like a grazer is that typically the grazer uh, is a unidirectional op uh, optic and we don't worry about what's happening behind um, and that's how we get to such a tight beam in this case though we have to get a really tight beam and to throw light back up into the cove uh, otherwise it just looks bad. So when we were creating this, we realized that you don't always want to throw light all the way across the ceiling. Sometimes I want to get out of the cove and just get out of the cove uh, to light space. And uh, so we have two different optics that we've created. And one of them uh, is when we go with our remote only, um, I have, uh, as you'll see on the polar plot, um, a 15 degree aiming angle from above the horizon. Uh, and as you look at that polar plot, you'll see that I come back towards the LED in a very flat approach. 
which is what allows us to give a very even or flat feeling to that surface that we're lighting. Um, and uh, the other uh, is when I don't want to throw it all the way across the room and maybe even hit the other wall, uh, we have our integral version. And with the integral version, you'll see that I have the driver body in front. And uh, we've painted it black because we want to suck up some of the light that's happening here. Uh, but also, this is when I would uh, be, uh, and if you look at the polar plot now, I'm about 10 degrees higher than I was with the remote version. And this one will throw light out, especially if I have a, um, an angled ceiling or um, a little bit deeper space between the ceiling and the cove. Uh, this one will work a little bit nicer in that approach. Uh, will give me more of a focal glow, if you will, if you're looking at the ceiling versus a very flat or evenly illuminated ceiling. And so the two optics are choices based on what your desire is and what the installation looks like. All right, so from the cove perspective, we, um, we have a micro cove, which has been um, really well received. It's won a, a numerous awards. Uh, it's, it does a fabulous job, honestly. Um, uh, pushing enough horsepower to light space off of the ceiling from the coves. Um, the question is, why do I need to expand our offering if that product is so great? Um, and it is, but the question, the, the point is the micro cove was really designed um, as a one size fits all, optically, and uh, which means I need more setback than today's coves are being, are given. Uh, it really works best from 18 inches and, and beyond. Uh, the scale of the product itself is fairly robust in today's world for, um, for coves. Uh, everything is getting smaller. Miniaturization is happening everywhere. And, um, and so the uh, Prue Cove is our answer to that. The Prue Cove gets uh, physically much smaller uh, in the integral version as well as in the remote version. We can handle uh, coves that are much more uh, petite. But it also addresses the, uh, the need for a, a tighter beam that throws light uh, from a much shorter setback. So now we're talking in the uh, definitely less than 18 inches, but uh, less than 12, often down into the 6 and even 4 inch range now, where designers are still wanting to push light out of the cove, get it across the ceiling, light space. And, um, and the micro cove is just not designed to do that kind of um, scale. And so the Fruit Cove answers that for us. In either version, uh, we get uh, that same approach. Okay, so when you talk about coves, there's really two kinds of coves that we deal with usually. One is the one we've been talking about already, and that is from the, from the wall, looking out into the room, and we're lighting typically up the, uh, up the ceiling and bouncing that back down into the space, either as a, a soft glow or as uh, the ambient light for the space. The other side, or the other option for coves, is at the perimeter as well, but we turn it around and we face the wall from some short distance. We aim up into the ceiling and bounce down from the ceiling down uh, into the space, and it creates a nice glow. We're just simply articulating that intersection of the ceiling and the wall, and so we'll call that a floating ceiling effect. And we have products uh, that do that. Uh, this technique has been around a long time. Our product uh, is called our P59, and we call that a cove in a box because it comes prefabricated. So the cove itself is made out of sheet metal, and then the housing uh, uh, attaches to it, and you put the whole thing up, and uh, you have it. There you go, cove in a box. Um, the features about those kinds of products, though, is obviously you're limited in terms of your aperture choices. Uh, we currently make two, a six inch and a nine inch, and in today's standards, sometimes that's a little big. Uh, but you also have some plenum height challenges sometimes. And, uh, and so um, you can use those, uh, but that sometimes is a challenge. Uh, and then when you choose those products, there is one feature about all of them, ours included, and that is it's a fixed optic. And so the LEDs sit uh, and reside behind the fascia, a front fascia, which hides them from the viewer's uh, 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 viewing angle, and light up into the ceiling. But that front fascia creates a shadow point, and we have to be very cautious to aim that shadow exactly into the corner of the ceiling and the wall. So those are some challenges. Uh, the uh, PCI, our, our Prucove Indirect product, which is this now, uh, addresses those challenges in a little bit different way and gives you some more flexibility. So first of all, uh, you don't have to use our cove in a box. You can build your own. 
And uh, it can be any dimension, which is really nice in terms of aperture opening as well as ceiling heights. Because it's adjustable, uh, we can aim uh, away from that fascia. The fascia will typically reside below it. And then secondly, because we're using that, uh, that top um, prismatic uh, refractor on, um, uh, on the outside of the fixture, it softens the beam. It gets rid, uh, rid of any potential striations. It allows us uh, to fill that, that ceiling really soft and really nice. And so uh, for, for maximum flexibility, for use with uh, non-Coven of Box style products, our PCI really fits that bill really well. The Prue Cove aiming is achieved by uh, a notch on the end plate that aligns with a notch in the housing. And you'd use a screw, uh, screwdriver or your fingernail or uh, something small to put it into the right notch. These notches um, have an indicator, an arrow on the end plate, which shows you the neutral position, which is the most forward aiming of the uh, main beam. And they do come from the factory preset in that position. If you'd like to adjust them, you simply uh, loosen the nuts on the end and you get uh, adjustment of about 50 degrees. Uh, the aiming notches on the end plate are in 10 degree segments. The other thing that really doesn't happen often but, but can and we want to enable it with this family uh, is now in that exact same application uh, where instead of aiming up into the ceiling now we want to peek over that front fascia still be coplanar so that if you're underneath it you do not see it but throw light down the wall in a graze effect so if that wall happens to have a texture to it which is the reason you would do this uh, we can create now some very strong interest with shadow and highlight coming from a fixture that's hidden and um, there are not very many op uh, fixtures on the market that can do that part and so the uh, the Pruco graze is what we call that and you can see it's adjustable here. Uh, we have a front fascia, or uh, they may have a front fascia of multiple uh, widths and heights, and uh, it is adjustable to, uh, to telescope out and look down, uh, still remaining coplanar though. And so uh, while the microcove is great at the things it does, the Prucove expands our ability to do uh, much more. So one of the things that our Prucove offers that our microcove did not is the ability to create your own coves uh, using our extrusions and uh, so for this family we wanted to do so and we have we've given you a traditional straight fascia extrusion uh, which is intended to have mud as well on this fascia as well as on the bottom uh, and then a, a now more common uh, knife edge uh, extrusion which again is intended to be mudded here as well and gives people this idea that it is a um, forever ceiling. And uh, to do that, we needed two different uh, sizes as well to accommodate both our uh, integral as well as our remote optics. And uh, these have been designed uh, specifically for these, so they match exactly in size, both in height uh, and width, and that allows for us to maintain our aiming angles um, and a perfect fit uh, within the cove. So there are times when you uh, are not making your own cove, but maybe you're relying on a, a prefabricated cove by a prefabricated ceiling like the uh, Armstrong Axiom. And in those instances, they make their own coves and products uh, that are designed to fit in those must comply with a couple of things. One, obviously the dimensions of the cove. We can't be any higher. We must fit within. Uh, but they also have a, a key slot in their extrusion and our fixtures uh, also have to carry that, key, that, that same key slot, which allows them to sit perfectly aligned uh, to slide in and be in the perfect place. So as you look at uh, our different versions, uh, this key slot is uh, right here on the bottom and it fits perfectly with the Armstrong. And so whether that is a uh, Armstrong where we're going from the wall to the ceiling um, in a uh, traditional sense, or if we're um, more of the floating ceiling approach that we talked about before, uh, those coves all have specific dimensions and we have made our fixtures to match those dimensions so that we do not peak above, we are not bigger, it fits perfectly with all of the Axiom ceilings. The optics itself is longer than the housing for the drivers. And uh, one of the reasons we wanted to do that, well actually there are two reasons, one was to get around a corner or a tighter corner allowed us 
uh, to mate, and if you see, I can do this, and we can get very tight. Um, the other thing was uh, the difference between the Pruco and the Microco is uh, the Pruco comes with uh, pre-wired whips, which allow us to simply plug and play. There's a, uh, a line voltage and then a low voltage, and that allows us then to make corners. Um, that allows us to shove in as well and allow us to get straight and closer. And uh, by way of closer, we uh, can be as tight as the end of one optic meeting right to the next one. Uh, and uh, as wide as or as long or far apart as eight inches. And uh, uh, what we have found is we have used them in space. If you're looking at this from an acute angle, from a distance, and you're worried about the gaps that might be showing, uh, then we limit that distance from optic to optic to about three inches. Uh, one of the things that we haven't talked yet about is emergency and how we handle that. Uh, in fixtures often of this scale and the size, no batteries come with them. Uh, in this case, however, we did make uh, accommodation for that. You can get emergency batteries in them. You can do uh, emergency circuits and then a transfer switch as well. So any of those three options are available in all of our versions. So as we move from our uh, PCG wall grazer, that uh, hidden uh, product, which we saw did a really nice job on this, we move to a more traditional kind of direct down approach. And this in case is our, uh, our P43 and our Bionic both have the same optics. And so we're looking at a a P43 wall grazer, and I have on the uh, opposite wall uh, the uh, distribution that you can see what's going on with the light itself, and then clearly on the wall here lit, lit uh, for you. Now the thing about uh, wall grazers especially is that uh, there are a couple of different levers that you can pull to make this more or less dramatic, and, and, uh, and it's important that you know which one you're after and, and how to accomplish that. So. In this case, we have put this fixture right into that same intersection of the wall and the ceiling, like we did with that PCG when it was hidden. However, in this case, we have a little bit more flexibility uh, to determine where we want it. It doesn't always have to go against the wall if we don't want it. And one of the things that determines whether we want it against the wall or not is how aggressive or how, um, how, pro how much projection off of the wall the texture itself has. Uh, in this case, we've got quite a bit of texture coming off the wall, and so as we're right up on it, uh, this uh, has a lot of drama at the top, but very little as it goes down, and uh, certainly less even at the bottom. And so in this case, we might want to give it a, a little bit more setback, and I'm going to do that by giving us about six inches. And now I've driven the drama down into this region um, we still have some up here, and you may say, well, six is, not a, uh, six is too much, I want it to come back a little bit. But you can see very small moves create big drama changes. And so the feel uh, is really determined by not only the fixture and that distribution that we've created, uh, but also a setback relative to how aggressive the uh, texture can be. So now we moved into a two inch aperture. This happens to be our P23. And as you see on the wall, I've got a fairly tight beam spread as well. And I have gone ahead and put that fixture right into that intersection of the wall and the ceiling. Now we talked a little bit about our PCG, that Pr Pruco grays being somewhat fixed. And by that I meant the, uh, the, the drop or the, uh, the aperture in that perimeter system typically doesn't exceed four to six inches. And, and um, so you can get a little bit wider if you wanted to, you can get smaller. Obviously, if you use our extrusions versus the Axiom, you have the freedom to do whatever you want. The Axioms are fixed. Um, but at any rate, here we are with a, a P23, and uh, we are with uh, right on top of it. And again, I'm gonna move this back a little, and you can see as we shift, the drama shifts fairly significantly. So now we're at about six inches. And, uh, and again, depending on your personal preference and what you're trying to create, you can dial that in the way you want. Okay, so we move now from uh, grazing, which is highlighting that texture and looking for drama, 
to washing. And in this case, what we're trying to do is wash this whole vertical surface in light. Now we are washing the, the grazed surface in light as well, but you'll notice that this one is quite a bit brighter. It's the same amount of light. It's just the angle at which we're hitting it is reflecting back into your eye, and so it feels more lit. Um, we have a couple of different styles of wall washing, though, uh, and uh, that's what I'm showing you right here. We are currently using our 4-inch, our P43 and or our Bionic. And, um, and again, against this wall, you can see the angle of attack of that light is up at 30 degrees. Now, what that does for you when we're washing this wall is it creates what I'm going to call a focal glow, which means in this area, somewhere in this five to six foot range where most people are looking, I'm going to see uh, a markedly higher level of intensity. Now, there are no striations and no shadows. And there, it's really clean, but there's for sure more intensity happening here, and that's where you're going to put um, a, a, a logo or a painting or some other something on the wall that you want to draw attention to, but you want the wall to feel lit. Um, and as you look at these numbers, uh, you can see I've got about 105 foot candles and it drops to about half, 53 at the moment. And then up here, we've got about 88 and, uh, and then it drops off even further down to about 37. So we've got this focal glow happening and we drop down slowly as we go up to the top and up to the bottom. This creates a wall that does not feel flat. It feels like it's got some movement in it when you look at it. And, um, and this would be what you would do if you have something on the wall. So now what we've done is we've chosen our P23, which is our two inch aperture um, wall washer. And uh, they both are wall washers. Uh, they both act the same way. However, they give very, very different results. Now, all of our wall washers from Prudential are designed to be a 30 inch setback from the wall, given that it's a nine foot wall. Obviously, if the wall grows in height, the setback grows as well. Um, but uh, at um, a nine foot high with a three foot setback, that gives me a 15 degree angle, uh, which is what the P23 is aimed at. And it puts the max candela into the intersection of the floor and the wall. And then if you look at the distributions on the polar charts, on the polar plots, it comes straight up as straight as we can. And what that does for us is it creates a wall that's much more evenly illuminated. And you can see by these numbers now, I was at 105 and now I'm at 59. And I go on up and I'm at 58. And I come back down here and I'm at about 35 and then 27 or so. And so on a max to min ratio, uh, this wall is going to be uh, better, if you will. There's gonna be less distance between my maximums and my minimums. However, what that does is it gets rid of my focal glow and it creates a wall that feels more flat. And so uh, you have to choose which one do I want. If I uh, don't have anything on this wall and I just wanted to paint it orange and have it vibrate the whole thing, this would be a great choice. Um, if it was a wall to, or a floor to ceiling uh, graphic, again, that I didn't want to have any variations, this would be a great choice. Um, so there are certain ways, uh, to, certain reasons why you'd want one or the other. Now to create the other, I wanted a focal glow and I'm using the P23. All I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat the distance and I'm going to move it forward from that 30 inches and I'll move it into about 24. And now you can see I'm starting to cheat uh, and get a little bit more focal glow happening. However, because it's a fixed optic, that is going to raise up on the wall. And so now instead of at the five to six foot range, I'm gonna be in at about the seven foot range. And as I come closer, you'll see these numbers now, I've got 71 uh, foot candles here at that five foot range, and now I'm up at 91 uh, in that about an eight foot range. So as I cheat it to get a focal glow, it's going to move up. So now the beauty of uh, the micro wash is we can do the same thing and bring it out of the ceiling and that gives us the ability to aim. Now it's designed to do the same 30 inch setback. It's designed for that same 15 degree angle into the intersection of the wall and the floor, uh, but it is aimable and so I can get up and adjust a little bit, but uh, when, we, when we come out of the ceiling plane, the other thing I'm able to do is uh, to throw light up and above. So in this case, if I had a, a, an open ceiling or a higher ceiling and I wanted to drop something down and give a wall wash effect, 
um, and have light go further up than the fixture itself. Dropping out of the ceiling, obviously, is the only way to do that. Uh, this, this product, our Micro Wash, which is just like the Micro Cove, uh, is designed to give a focal glow as well. And uh, if you look here at the numbers, I'm, uh, I'm about 85 foot candles. I get up uh, to about 100 in this range, and, uh, and then I'm falling down to 40 and to 30. So again, no striations, no noise. The wall feels really, really nice and evenly illuminated, but for sure I have this kind of extra intensity in this glow area. Now, if I want to take the microwash and I want to create a flatter wall, um, and uh, I want this wall to radiate very evenly, all I'm going to do is give it some more distance. And in this case, I'm going to add about six inches. And we can watch these numbers fall. And, and if you're in person, you feel it. Uh, we've got the numbers so you can see it, but uh, in person, it really feels flatter. So by creating distance, that wall becomes flatter. And then the numbers themselves, in this case, I'm, uh, I'm still about 73 here, but this has dropped down to about 77. And uh, this is uh, 42 and uh, about 30 again at the bottom. So what's happening is I'm not, I'm not really getting rid of light down here at all. I'm just taking this light uh, and, and flattening it out by distance. So today we've talked about a number of applications, uh, be that uh, cove lighting, at the perimeter, uh, grazing, washing, or floating ceiling effects. And for, uh, if you remember our coves, we showed you and talked about the Micro Cove, which is an existing product that's been around for a while. We introduced to you a new family called the Pru Cove, smaller, uh, in designed for tighter places and shorter distances from the cove to the ceiling. We uh, moved to our floating ceiling effect and we talked about our P59, which is a static fixed optic, and then our Pru Cove, which adjusts for variable dimensions, and then into our grazing, which uh, we have our P43, which is lighting the wall behind me, our P23, we talked about, and then uh, also our Pru Cove has a graze effect that you can use at the perimeter as well. And then for our wall washing, we uh, showed the P43, and the 23, and then also our out of cove version of the micro cove called our micro wash. So hopefully that uh, was a great synopsis of what we have, how we design things, uh, our intent behind them for how you're going to use them, uh, what kind of effects you can generate, how you can get those effects. And, uh, and so hopefully that was a great primer. If you have more questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us via our website or your local agent.